In this video, you'll learn how using a factory to create PSR7 objects makes your code more flexible by making it much simpler to swap PSR7 libraries. Previously in this series, we learnt how type hinting with interfaces makes it easy to use different third-party packages. We did this by using two different packages that implement the PSR7 standard, Guzzle and the Nihome package. Here in the home controller, we're currently creating two objects using the Guzzle PSR7 package, the stream and the response. Let's create the stream using the Nihome package instead to see how that works. First, let's comment out the line that's creating the stream object with the Guzzle package, and below that, create a stream object using the stream class from the Nihome package instead. To use this package's stream class like this, we need a corresponding use statement to import it into the current namespace. When we run this to view the home page, it still works as before. As the stream and response objects are part of the PSR7 standard, we can create them using any package that implements this standard, and they will interoperate with no problems. What isn't standard, however, is the way we create these objects. The response is created by simply creating a new object of that class, but the stream is created in two different ways. This means that this code is tightly coupled to whatever implementation of PSR7 we're using, making it more difficult to swap out one implementation for another. The solution to this is the PSR17 standard. This describes a standard way to create PSR7 objects in a package-independent way. PSR17 describes a standard for factory objects. These are objects that follow the factory design pattern. This is where the factory creates objects for us, instead of having to create them directly with the new keyword. That way, we don't need to know how the classes are constructed, as the factory will do it for us. Both PSR7 packages we've already installed include PSR17 implementations. So let's input both of those into the current namespace with use statements. The classes have different names, so we don't need to alias them, like we did with the response classes, in order to use them at the same time. Then, at the top of the index method, let's create a factory object from the guzzle package. To create a stream object now, we don't need to create it using either of these methods. Instead, we call the createStream method on the factory object. Let's run this, and it still works. To create a response object, instead of using the new keyword, we call the createResponse method on the factory object. And when we run this, it still works. So now we're not creating the stream and response objects directly, rather the factory is doing it for us. Note that the createResponse method takes an optional argument for the response code. The default is 200, and this is part of the standard too. So if you do want to return a 200 response code, you can safely omit this if you like. Let's change this so that we're using the other implementation of the PSR17 factory instead. So let's comment out the line where we're creating the guzzle PSR17 factory object, and after that, create an object of the Nihome implementation instead. As the methods we are using from the factory object are all part of the standard, we don't need to make any other changes at all. And when we run this, it still works. Now we're using the factory class to create the stream and response objects. We can remove the use statements for the classes we're no longer using to create those objects. So now we're no longer tied to a specific implementation of PSR7 stream and response objects, only the factory. To change PSR7 implementations, all we need to do is use a different PSR17 factory. 
It should be noted that PSR 17 actually defines separate interfaces for response factories and stream factories. So, strictly speaking, we should create separate factory objects for responses and streams. In practice, however, most PSR 17 implementations, like the two that we've used, implement all PSR 17 interfaces in the same class. So we can safely use a single factory object from these classes to create both the response and stream objects. So now we can switch PSR7 libraries by just changing the factory that we're using. We don't need to change any of the code that creates the stream and response objects. This makes the code more flexible and easier to test. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.